breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Oh my god, you're listening to The Glitter Boys! Bringing us back to our slow work through the foundations of understanding Palladium. Today we're talking about the core mechanics. Excellent. I, I, I think I would have killed something very dear to me to have this explained to me in the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, how do you mean? It was it was the Wild West of rules back then. Yeah. I, I was a I was young. I was in junior high, and Palladium is Palladium is a very open-ended system. I, I it it would have helped to have a series of, on definitions and what I needed at the time. I, I kind of hand waved a lot of stuff to play back then. True. There's still this inner part of me, this inner explorer, this spelunker, this archaeologist, this Indiana Jones in my soul that looks back at the time that I spent deciphering the game <laughs> that I would never give up. Yeah, the game was not well explained at the time. And yeah. some might say it's still not super well explained. I think it's a lot better than it used to be. But I do remember the the t- the hours and days spent like pouring over things, figuring out how systems work, mastering what I was reading. That it was again, it was like ancient tome that I was yeah. <laughs> translating into something <laughs> I understood. And I loved it. To go off that real fast before we dive in, the Ultimate Edition of Rifts is so much easier to follow than the old one. Oh, so yeah. Take take that with a grain of salt. It's it's not it's not the Sanskrit it used to be. I mean, anything's easier to follow than the old ones. Eh? <laughs> oh. Eh? Eh? Okay, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a zinger. That worked. <laughs> I mean, it's a very inside <laughs> joke. <but. laughs> yeah. I was weak. I, 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 I apologize. So anyway, today we wish to educate listeners who may not know on the concepts the core, core mechanical concepts that you need to understand in order to play and appreciate uh, Palladium games. We'll be using the Rifts Ultimate Edition that we talk about all the time. Once again, as our central point of reference, it is considered basically to be the, the modern culmination of all of the things that are Palladium systems. Absolutely. At its base, you've got a standard D20 roll high system for a lot of the uh, more involved actions of play so if you've played dungeons and dragons if you've played any of the other major gaming systems that use a core single d20 to resolve actions you're familiar with how this works roll a d20 add up some numbers boom there you go compare it to a target number if you beat it you succeed yeah if it's a test that is opposed like if you are trying to roll a d20 based action against someone such as a combat role, then their target number that you're given, you want to beat it. Now, that's one of the main differences is that in Dungeons and Dragons and a lot of the other things, the target number is what you want to meet or exceed. You must get greater than or equal to the target number. In Rifts, defenders win ties. So as I like to say it, you must exceed in order to succeed. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. In D&D, a lot of combat drags. I've noticed, and some of this might be your house rules, NPC, but when we are doing, like, my, my character can attack five times. Uh, he, has, he has five actions to use. And on the whole, that, that takes less than 60 seconds for me to get through. Yeah, it, and I think that is largely because of some of the streamlining that I've done mm-hmm. to make combat move a lot faster. Yeah, with a small group... Having multiple actions and against a small group of enemies, it's actually a lot easier than you might think it would be. But when it comes to large groups, oh, hey, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's a nightmare in pretty much any system. You have a lot of stuff you can do with, uh, let's just take a combat round for, as an example. You have a certain amount of, of attacks, and those can be spent with dodges. Those can be spent with parries. Those can be saved for dealing with incoming attacks. This is not. The, the phase which you might be used to is movement, action, and then like your freebie, like a five-foot step or, or, or any of the other things that, that D&D will allow you to do. 
this is, it, it's a much more creative way of spending your moment. And that, that's one thing I, that's one thing I really appreciate about this. The player's turn is a lot more involved in Palladium systems than it is in something like Dungeons and Dragons where you get an action. Yeah, it's still quicker though. I, and I will say this, at least in my gaming group, D&D rounds took forever. I'm curious, were you using minis in those groups? Always. I, yeah. I love minis. Yeah, minis, in my opinion, make things take longer. But I'm not a minis person. I, I prefer yeah. more anime style, action lines, theater of the mind kind of stuff. Things that are hard to get into your head when you're like, I step five feet and I I stand in place and I swing and then he swings and then I swing. And you're like, well, in a real <laughs> combat, you guys are moving all over the place. You know, you're not yeah. you're not standing in a five foot area. Just swing, 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 swing. It's it's a lot more involved in that. And I feel that mini space systems encourage more of a quote unquote tactical focus but i think tactics has been dumbed down to mean i stand in place and swing a sword you know yeah that said matthew plays an awful lot of warhammer so (laughs) (laughs) a a round taking a couple of minutes in dd is nothing compared to a turn in in warhammer where we're talking half an hour oh dear god (laughs) toy soldiers aside let's get back to the 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 core mechanics (laughs) Yeah, D20 versus target number. Beat that target number and what you wish to do happens. I think the saving throws are... You're not rolling against anything usually in that, so they set the target number that you want to hit. Generally, I think the exceed to succeed really only applies if you're going against someone. Yeah. If they are parrying or dodging or putting up some kind of a defense, you need to overcome that defense. There's also things like uh, horror factor, which goes through a lot of it. You know, I'll have to double check. I think horror is simply another save. And with a save, you want to meet mm. that target number. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's usually listed higher. separately. So, yeah. Let's see. So, skills are based on percentile dice. Yes. You will get a set amount, uh, unless you have a, a special feature, you will get a set amount of skill to start. And then that will go up by a specified amount every level. Yeah. That is what you add to your percentile roll to beat a certain difficulty. So, for example, underwater basket weaving, if that's a skill that you have, you let's say that skill were to give you a base of uh, a measly 10 percent. It's a very difficult skill. It takes it, it takes decades of dedication to truly master weaving that underwater basket. <laughs> so you start at 10 percent and you only let's say that it's let's say it says 10 percent base plus 3 percent per level. Ooh, oh, boy. You're not going to be getting that good at that skill unless you have a class that gives you a bonus to it. So Mm -hmm. if you are taking the um, artisan, let's say the The underwater uh, artisan, uh, no hipster yoga master. So you're taking the hipster (laughs) yoga master who gets a strange plus 50% bonus to underwater basket weaving because it's simply one of their bragging skills. They only have Mm -hmm. it so that they can impress people. So let's say they get a plus 50% to that. What that means is you start the game and you're going to have your base 10% and it's going to be permanently increased by that 50%. So now your base is 60% plus 3% per level. That guy's probably going to master that skill in his lifetime. Yeah. It's different from the, from the D20 system in that, in a number of ways. And I honestly like the skill set, the, the, the way you resolve skills in Palladium a lot more. And I was a diehard D20 uh, fanboy. I, I still am. I think it's a great <laughs> system. But I, I like Palladium's use of skills very much. Well, w- one thing to note about the skills that makes them different from uh, the other dice rolls in this is that, at least according to standard Palladium rules, unless you're using a house rule, your goal is to roll those D percentile, so you know, two ten-sided dice, basically, um, get, one stig- get the tenth digit, and you want your total that you rolled without modifiers, to be under the skill percentage that you have on your sheet. Unlike D20 rolls, where you add the modifier to your roll, skill modifiers are added to the skill. So if something has a negative modifier, like if it's a taxing or difficult task, and let's say you have GM says, you don't have a minus 20% to that, that modifier is applied to your skill before you roll, not after. 
Yeah, that's that's true. It's it's taken off the the base you have before you before you roll. Let's see, uh, the the attributes itself don't affect a whole heck of a lot, like like yeah. it used to in D and D. And I'm sorry to keep bringing up D and D in a Palladium <laughs> podcast. It's just it's kind of what you measure against. Well, it is currently the most popular, the most talked about game in the world. Well, role playing yeah. game at least, Dungeons and Dragons. I can't escape it. I don't really. I don't hate it. I just don't play it anymore. I don't run it unless we're talking like old school. I prefer my Dungeons and Dragons from the 70s. Thank you very much. But with <laughs> the the new onset of Fifth Edition and the explosion in popularity. Anyone who's listening to this, I, you'll be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't have Dungeons and Dragons as a point of comparison in their brain. Yeah. Let's see. What else should we cover in this? Let's leave missile combat the hell out of it because <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah. its own topic. That's such a huge topic. I actually spent half of yesterday rewriting the missile rules for our game in order to make <laughs> them more Max Sterling like based upon your statements from the previous oh, right. recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I need more Max Sterling in my game. So this is how you I'm going to make it happen. Everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. It's a very simple system. Yeah. That's, there's, there's a couple of things that you may be used to coming into Palladium that you, you're you not going to find. And that is like improvement on saving throws like your attributes going up every every level. That's that's not that's yeah. not a that's not so much a thing. It's it's more of a skill game and an attack game. Yeah. The only things that go up are your combat abilities and your base skill percentages. And yeah. it, and certain characters, certain specific characters and it will say this specifically in those character classes descriptions might get increasing saving throw bonuses. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. So to feed off the one we we did before, in in order to play this, you don't you don't need to understand a whole heck of a lot as long as you leave missiles off the table. <laughs> yeah. And I, I I think some of that is just my my utter confusion as a child reading over this stuff. I I could probably get it now. I wonder if we locked them in a room, the Palladium missile combat system and the third edition grappling rules. Who would, who would come out of that room alive? <laughs> Dude, uh, if, 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 it's, if it's a contest between the more, you know, inscrutable, the missiles win, hands down. <laughs> like, the, the, the grappling put up a valiant attempt, as grapplers do. But, I mean, missiles. The missile rules, man. Those yeah. clouds. Oh, yeah. And one other basic mechanic, and again, it's so basic... You probably wouldn't even think of it as a mechanic that needs to be mentioned. And and again, going back to old school gaming assumptions, the damage roll or the effect mm-hmm. roll. It, it's a core mechanic. It's it's hard to describe it like an, an action description like the other two. But still, damage roll. Very simple. If you shoot someone or punch someone or hit someone, that attack is going to have a set amount of damage that it does to, you know, try and make the opponent closer to dead. And that will be very simple. Roll a number of the designated dice and maybe multiply them if it says so. Total the results. Yeah. Apply that to their closer to deathness rating. And there you go. You know, we should really quick touch on uh, initiative as well. Oh, initiative is another. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) That's one that we do differently in our group. But the standard initiative is exactly the same as in D&D with one major difference from the modern flow and that you roll every round. Yeah. Now that's something I really like because, you know, a, a combat can last a long time in a game. And if you roll low initially, you're just sitting, picking up the pieces at the end. I, I do enjoy that it happens at the end of every turn. Yeah. And it, it took a while for me to decipher certain hidden rules like, the concept of what it means in Palladium when you have the initiative or when you lose the initiative. It's a common term bandied about in certain effects in combat. Wasn't the easiest thing to find, but I eventually deciphered it. Like, you know, you have to pour over this tome. Even modern days, you have to look at this and decode the text within to find hidden rules. I would say that half of everyone's dissatisfaction that that they get and everyone goes through this with palladium from time to time would just simply come from organization 
The the problem yeah. is, is I don't I don't know how to fix that with such a massive library. Like I I don't have any suggestions. I'm not going to armchair or general my way through this because I don't have the answer. There there's just so much. I'll put this out there. I enjoy formatting and editing and organizing text. I just really like doing it. It's something that I've always done with game design myself. I like to do it with my house rules. I like to make things, you know, I like to make them permeable and uh, grokkable. I, I want, I want all texts like this to be understood by everybody who reads them. And I don't think this will ever happen. But one day, my dream would be to inherit or acquire the property, Palladium stuff, Rift stuff, and dedicate the rest of my life the rest of it <laughs> to just reorganizing it that's it mm-hmm. just take some of the stuff from the older from the newer books apply it to the older text reorganize reformat re-release take the art as it is put it in the same place as you would expect it to be and just condense a few things I wouldn't even change the rules <laughs> yeah just, <laughs> just, I just format it yeah, a little differently reformat so you can find stuff yeah no, I, I agree completely. And I must say, NPC, that is a noble life's work. That would not be that would not be a wasted life. I dreamed of this as a teenager, actually. <laughs> like I mentally rewrote books as I was reading them to be like, yeah, if I were to make another edition of this, I'd do it. And it it wasn't out of dislike or disapproval. It was it was out of love of what I was reading and just my obsessive compulsive nature desire to mm-hmm. reorganize. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. That'll get you through most of it. That's combat, how to get your ass into combat, how to destroy, how to save. What else? Do we miss anything? Yeah, that's it. Like combat action, saving throws, most general, like doing things against someone. It's going to be a D20. Pretty much anything else is going to D percentile. And there's your mechanic. There's your system. Yeah. Once again, uh, we've touched on this before, but uh, in order to play this in a non-virtual dice, you're, you're going to need... You're going to want, you're not going to need, but you're going to want more than one set of dice. Uh, You're going to need, a. would I'd recommend about five D20s and a big old pile of D6s. I have a bowl sitting here in my gaming space for rifts that I, that currently contains 40 D20s. They are (laughs) color coded. (laughs) Or, Or is it 50? It might be 50. I forget. Sets of 10 that were all color sets. And each one I have to mean a different thing. It helps me speed things up. Like some dice represent committing more than one attack to the action. Like if I'm rolling this die, I just automatically know that this die always has like a plus four to it or something like that. So I set these out in advance so I can speed through combats a lot quicker with multiple opponents. Our combats do go a lot faster than one would expect. Uh, a lot of that is your streamlining, and a lot of it's your organization. I'm I'm going to say that as a player, you you need what pretty much what I said about five, <laughs> and then a handful. As a GM, I have no idea. It's a lot. To, you you should have a lot. And you should have a lot in general, but you should have them set out <laughs> as as a GM. The mess. Of palladium books spread out all over <laughs> that's a that's a crucial component in my i i think role. <laughs> most of us feel somewhere deep down that we are exploring forgotten worlds and that's part of the joy of palladium it's that stack of books that you reference to that's and i mean it's it's a weird like third order joy but it's still a very real consequence of playing palladium and it's not just the joy you get in gaming or exploring and reading it's it's finding these 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 gems in in this pile. It, it's like an early explorer discovering a a lost civilization. Your Indiana Jones reference is spot on. <laughs> Thanks. I, I'm trying to remember the exact tagline, but I think most of their their advertisements will say something along the lines of one system infinite worlds or one system infinite yeah. possibilities and they've been saying that for a long time and it really is I think it's possibilities yeah you know, different versions of it like you know dead rain or chaos earth or beyond the supernatural whatever they will have their inconsistencies with the the core system but then again that is assuming you're using one book as a reference in my case i use yeah. rifts ultimate edition as a reference going to something like nightbane there's slight differences but they're really only That's minor sad. Yeah, they're, 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 they're tweaks. They're, yeah. they're not 
it's not a whole new system you're dealing with. All right. Well, that's it. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you have some understanding of how to play Palladium now. And uh, we really hope you join us in playing Palladium. I'm gonna be, can we be snarky for a second? Would that go against our branding? Well, before we get snarky, I want to make a note that after this episode, we're finally going to start having episodes on house rules. Yeah, I've been wanting to start establishing some things here before we break into how we do things differently. But it would be nice for this podcast on the long term to be something that someone could go back to the beginning, start from episode one and just keep listening and start learning things as they do instead of having to skip around. So yeah, now that we've explained the the core system, look forward to more house rules focused episodes coming soon. With that said, bring the snark. You know, the world doesn't need any more D and D. The world has plenty of D and D. When I when I say join us in Palladium, I I I mean it. Palladium <laughs> is an amazing thing that you if you haven't played it, you need to. It is it is a completely different way of playing. It's. It, it you know their their other tagline uh, about imagination that that's that's what Palladium is. It's if you bring imagination and you have a large imagination, you can do anything in this game. So join us, play. We don't need more D and D players. Everyone's doing it. It's all over the damn place. Yeah, I I agree. I do love the the OSR stuff yeah. that's come out of people returning to the older versions of D and D and. Uh, realizing that they were quite approachable and fun. I've been very enamored of that. I don't think we need any more new D&D. Yeah. And yeah, just new series of books. Fuck off with that shit. I'm not buying my six monsters manual. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and I want to make a note that I do not say this to disparage anyone's tastes in gaming. We both try to be positive with our love for the Palladium system. And loving one system doesn't necessitate hating something else. But at least in this case, I do want to see more people playing things that aren't D. &D. <laughs> yeah. Just do. <laughs> I, and, and, you know, I know this is a Palladium podcast, but there is so many role-playing games out there. This is just the one with the biggest world. <laughs> yeah, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time.